Genesis 19, 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. No stopping, no parking here. Shake somebody's hand and say, no parking here. Let's not only go for automobiles, but many of us have parked spiritually. And in our growth, we've just stopped. And we decided we're not going any further. And yet we say, as we grow in age, we want to grow in grace. Doesn't make any difference how old you are, you can still grow. Our city streets are highway and expressways and turnpikes. There are a number of places where motorists are not permitted to park. I think I reminded you at fellowship this morning, uh, parking here and blocking people driveway, their garages, and whatnot is forbidden. Without a chance to get, you are going to get a chance, that is, of getting a ticket from the police if you do park. And that's what I told you all this morning that even the neighbors have said they're going to call the police. You stand a chance of getting a ticket. These no parking signs are put there for a purpose. Many times these signs, they save our lives. For if one would park in these areas, other cars would possibly run into them or not be able to pass. As it is in the natural realm of things, so it is in the spiritual realm. Through the years, we have been rewarded and as it been rewarding to us, we cannot stop. They have warned us. We cannot stop and pair and park on our paths. And you meet some people like that, that's all they can talk about is what I used to do. For the penalty for parking in a forbidden area is the stunting potentials. You stop there, you just stunt your potentials. You'll never be old that you ought to be. You narrow your vision. Arrest development. And you limit living. And I need to go over that again. If you just gonna sit down there, and you and park yourself, you will not reach your highest potentials. You'll never be able to have visions as you should. You arrest your development. And there is room for development. No one ever parked in life without paying the penalty. Shake somebody's hand and say, no one ever parked in life without paying a penalty. The command to the church is to move forward. That's the reason why you find us doing something. You become stale, you become stagnant, uh, non-productive. Yes, yes, the reason for this commandment is life is not a cemetery. 
Life is a highway. Life is not a rest home, but a gymnasium. It's something to be going, doing all of the time. And lazy people just like to sit still and do nothing. Can I get a witness? Life is not a parking lot, but it's a thoroughfare. In this life, we either going forward or going backward. We either going up or we going down. We either growing or we are dying. There's no neutral ground in life for parking. Let me hear you say that there's no neutral ground in life for parking. Now when they made these late model cars, they built them as such that there's a forward and there was a reverse. And there's a parking. But uh, spiritually speaking, we are to go forward. And I want you to just think of that. Because some of us haven't grown one hour since we've been in church. Still a little puny weakly. Easily get upset, frustrated. Get mad with the church. Want to go home and sit down. Can I get a witness? Still on the ball. Still in the playpen. Playing with rattles. Somebody got to give you a pacifier. You're not able to eat meat. Can I get a witness? No parking in this life, in this spiritual life. In this 19th chapter of Genesis, we encounter a man who if he had followed the commands of God, would have reached his highest potential. But sometimes we get sidetracked. You and I could have been much more than what we are now if we had to follow God. And by reading the story, we learn that he parked in the wrong place at the wrong time. And therefore remaining is of this chapter of the Old Testament. It went down in obscurity. In this chapter, Lot appears in a better light than in the previous relationship with Abraham. Yet, at the same time, the Sodom's folly in the selfish choice to live in Sodom appeared only the darker as seen in the results. Can I take my time? Let us compare with the general population of Sodom. Lot himself was a decent person. But the tragedy era was that he made was to park his lowest ambition. This was no ordinary man. Lot was not necessarily an ordinary man, for in his veins flowed some of the blood of the patriarchs. Yet he stopped on Light Highway and put his soul in parking gear. I think I better take my time. A noted writer once said, along the plains of hesitation bleached the bones of countless millions who at the dawn of victory stopped for a moment of rest and while resting, they died. And I'm saying this for some people that have gone home and some of you who are sitting up here decide I ain't gonna do nothing here. As long as God give you health and strength, can I get a witness? You ought to go in the vineyard and do what? Do what? Shake somebody's hand before they get the first little nap and say we ought to work. God's harsh judgment 
are usually tenor with mercy. We see his mercy in this narrative, in that though it seemed that he should have destroyed Lot with the city, he sought to spare his life, to warn Lot, to leave the city of Sodom. God sent two angels in human form to warn him of the impending danger, the measure of this people iniquity. Yeah, was now full, and God had determined to destroy them. This news was told to his friends and his relatives, but they only treated it with contempt and derision. His own mind was convinced that the wrath of God would fall upon the city, but yet he was trying to defer his flight. Well, he felt a regret at leaving so many of his friends and relatives, or was he was grieved at the thought of losing all of his substance. He was not sufficiently earnest to escape the impending danger. Don't let nothing or nobody send you to hell. Can I get a witness? If I have to leave everything I got, I don't want to go to hell. If I have to leave my relatives and leave whatever it is, I'd rather have Jesus. Can I get a witness? The angel therefore took him and his wife and daughters by the hand and led them out of the city and gave them some counsel which is contained in the text. It says this, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plains. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. In other words, move on up a little higher. You living beneath your privilege. Tell somebody, say, move up higher. You living beneath your privilege. Many people are hearing such commands every day, but are not adhering to them. Many people are trying to avoid God's command and going their own way. And sometimes when we think that we know what is best for us over against what God has designed for us, God will let us go on our way and fail. So rather than going down in history as a great patriarch, Lot went down in history as the man who made both of his daughters pregnant in a cave. I wish I had somebody praying. At a certain, as the curtain of dawn in the narrative, the name of Lot dropped from the lips of men and it is erased from further possibility. In the pages of history, maybe it is foolish to think about it or speculate about it, but I've often wondered what great achievement Lot might have accomplished had he he the high call of the mountain. Can I get a witness? Oh, when I look around me and see the tragedy of human lives stroll all along the highway of life. And I say, if they just had a heeded the call of God, can I get a witness? I imagine what the old people used to say. Yes, that either you move or you lose. You see, as starting early, stated early, life is not a parking lot. Yeah, but that.
kind of a highway that allows me to narrow the gap between what I am and what I can become. God is constantly saying, go to the mountain. In other words, don't park here. The reason most people park and never reach their highest potential is because parking is so much easier. Naturally speaking, parking is cheap. You don't burn any gas while you park. You don't use any oil. And there is nowhere a tear on your tie. Can I get a witness? The battery are the generation. But parking always does. It doesn't get you anywhere. I don't know about you, but I want to move up a little higher. Gonna get a witness. But I came to serve notice on you. Whatever difficulties you have to encounter, I know it's not easy. God never promised it would be easy. But God's grace, grace is sufficient. And in every life, mm, some rain must fall. I got to keep going. I face some disappointments. There are some sick days. And there are some sorrowful times. Can I get a witness? And many times my heart is made to bleed. But oh, every time I think about stopping here, I hear something on the inside. Can I get a witness? Say, so hold on. Hold on a little while longer. And that's what I want to tell you tonight, uh, that if God is on your side. He is more than the world is against you. Oh, when I think about Dr. King in the 50s and 60s, yes, Lord, you know that I wanted to park many times because of opposition from blacks and whites. Can I get a witness? But oh, he kept on going. I want to tell you tonight, if you got it on the inside, you can't stop when you want to stop. I wonder if I can get a witness. I'd like to talk to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah said, I tried it. But it was just like fire shut up in my bones. Oh, oh Lord. And I believe I got a witness. For I guess some of you said, I said I'm going home and I'm not coming back. But the more you try to stay at home, some got all on the inside. Can the church say hallelujah? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. And the more I think about Jesus, Jesus, I said, Jesus, is there anybody here that know anything about Jesus? He could have stopped on Life Highway. Can I get a witness? Matter of fact, you could have stopped down in the wilderness when Satan told him, if 
you are so much God. Yeah. You ought to turn these stones to bread. <laughs> I feel a little better now. But I heard him say, man, shall not live by bread alone. Can I get a witness? And that's all I want to tell you. Satan will try to stop you. And finally, Jesus had to tell him to get behind it. Shake somebody's hand and say, I am stopped. Walking with Jesus, and I'm going through. Wait a minute, Roy, hold it. I'm just gonna preach a little anyhow. Jesus could have stopped her when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed until sweat ran down like drops of blood, but he finally said, Not my will. Ah, not my will, but then be done. Can I get a witness tonight? Is he all right? Jesus could have stopped her. When he got to a place called Galilee, they tried to run him out of town. But Jesus said, no, I'm on a mission. And whatever the Father wants me to do, I'm going to do it anyhow. Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Is there anybody here that really know him? Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm glad that Jesus did stop her. And when he got on the mountain, oh, that is Mount Calvary, and started to die in the fair, Jesus, he kept on dying. I said, Jesus, he kept on dying until he said it was finished. And then he gave up the ghost. Can I get a witness? Jesus could have stopped while he was in the grave. But early, I said, I feel like giving up sometime. I'm human like everybody else. Something within me. That hole is the rain. Woo! Something within me. That I cannot explain. Yeah! Yeah! I wonder if you have. make you go when you don't feel like going. And the very first thing they talk about you, you make you pray for. Yeah! You can't stop speaking to them. If you got the love of Christ in your heart, when you see them again tomorrow, you say, I love you. Hey! Yeah! I'm praying for you. With it, but I just want you to tell somebody softly. So I ain't gonna stop. Just tell somebody, I'm going through. I'm going through. I ain't gonna turn to the right. I ain't gonna turn to the left. Yeah. God been too good to me. Through many days.
going to stop praising him. God been too good to me. The Bible said, let everything that has breath do what? Do what? Do what? Do what? If it really been good to you, I want you to stand on your feet. You can sit down, shake somebody's hand and put your arm around them. You, but the Lord been good to me. Been good. Woo! The Lord been good. I don't care what folks say. I'm 
apart and you made it difficult for some other people to get around you. You ain't doing nothing and don't want other folks to do it. You ain't going nowhere and don't want them to go. Just hold. 